Hello and welcome to our faculty spotlight interviews. These interviews are intended to provide our students and community members with the opportunity to get to know faculty and how their academic and career paths have led them to Mesa Community College. Today we're going to be speaking with Bootsy Martinez from the Administrative uh, Administration of Justice Department. Uh, so welcome, please introduce yourself and tell us what classes you're currently teaching. Hi, I'm Bootsy Martinez and right now I teach in the ACE uh, accelerated college and uh, hoop hoop of learning college awesome. for our Native American high school students. I teach regular um, across the board, um, you know, general student population as well. But I have been teaching the ACE and hoop program for a couple of years, and that's wonderful. Awesome. What's the goal of the ACE and hoop program? Um, we get students in who are in high school, and they reverse uh -huh. transfer their college credits back to high school, so they're getting a little jump. Uh -huh. on our uh, college credits and also learning about some of the things that they might want to pursue as far as a uh, career path. Very cool. I love the basketball references. Okay, so being a teacher like you are now, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Well, actually, when I was growing up, when I was little, um, my family had a friend uh, who was uh, an FBI agent. Oh. And um, I really, uh, was very admiring of that and I thought that I wanted to do that and mm -hmm. when I told my family they just laughed because there weren't any female FBI agents at that time huh. and I thought well you know what I still want to do something like that and mm -hmm. um, I uh, you know I'm from New York and the NYPD is you know almost legendary there and I thought well you know I would like to be an NYPD officer and uh, what I wound up doing actually was working for the state I was um, I was an auxiliary police officer for the NYPD, which is probably what you would call a reserve officer here. And mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I did foot patrol, and mm -hmm. um, I found out that uh, I like figuring things out better than, you know, having people toss flashbangs at us and things like that <laughs> on the street. Oh, so yeah. you know, I think you know, street officers do a really amazing job. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to. Um, you know, figure things out. So I went to work for the state as an investigator. Okay, very cool. So then you're able to use your problem solving skills that way. That's right. I was. Awesome. Yeah, it, it, um, it's really mm -hmm. interesting, actually. You know, an investigator. There are a lot of investigator jobs, and I think a lot of people don't know about them because they think, oh, detective. You know, you have to be uniformed police first, but they're not. Yeah. There are a lot of state agencies that have investigators and. It's very interesting, you know, looking into backgrounds and trying to mm -hmm. put the puzzle pieces together and so forth. So there are a lot of opportunities for that. Yeah, definitely. So how did school fit into this? Like, where did you go to college? What was your major? I uh, got a criminal justice bachelor's degree from John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York mm. City, which is a wow. city university. And um, I, uh, I took a long time to finish my college degree because I'm interested in learning and a lot of different things appeal to me. And I remember being a senior and uh -huh. having to choose my final classes. And I was talking with my advisor and, you know, he basically yelled at me and he said, you don't have time to take Swahili classes. <laughs> you need to graduate. <laughs> Oh. But everything looked interesting to me and I still am a you know, lifelong learner. I, I still love to learn things. Yeah, and that's awesome. And that's something that we do like to encourage in our students, you know, like if they want to take Swahili and explore their interests in there. Um, I mean, you never know. It could change up their career paths. Um, so when you went to college, this kind of you already answered this question, but did you go to college with the intention of getting the job that you have now? Um, and then what other jobs led you here to MCC? Well, um, I'm, I'm also a writer and I've written oh. quite a bit about the security uh -huh. field and law enforcement. And uh -huh. I um, started teaching uh, while I was writing and then mm -hmm. the teaching just sort of took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I moved here five years ago from Las Vegas where I had been living. And, mm -hmm. um, and the first thing that I did was contact MCC and see whether I could um, have an opportunity to teach here. And Very I think cool. What it, made you choose MCC? Well, MCC, uh, I think, does really terrific job. You know, it really is a community college, a college for the community. And I've had such a great uh, diversity of students in my classes. It's been really terrific to see. I've had, you know, from the young ones, the high school students, all the way up through senior citizens who mm -hmm. are taking um, 
the classes for interest or because they want to change careers or do something different and mm -hmm. lots of veterans and we've got yeah. people from all over the world here and yeah. it's just really terrific. Awesome. So is that your favorite thing that you would say about MCC? And then do you also have a favorite part of working with our students? Um, I think our students are fantastic. You know, I think that once uh, they're in my classroom, they are uh, engaged and, mm -hmm. you know, they learn lots of things I think that they didn't expect to learn. And I also try to um, do hands on learning. I mean, it, it's a little tough in, you know, COVID times, but we managed to work around that. Um, but especially when we're all together in the classroom, um, mm -hmm. I do field trips. So I've taken students to the prison. I've taken mm -hmm. them to jail, to police departments, to the oh. sheriff's office where the sheriff sat down and talked with them. I've mm -hmm. taken them to courthouses where the presiding judge sat down and talked with them. So they've got to, um, gotten to have lots of really cool experiences observing things in different parts of the criminal justice system. Very cool. Um, is there a most challenging part of your position now? Um, I, I, it's, I think it's challenging for me to not be able to be in the classroom. I think that, yeah. um, you know, online learning is terrific yeah. and I have a lot of fun with it and I think the students enjoy it too, but I really like the give and take of being in the classroom and getting to hear right on the spot what a student thinks. Yeah. Is there anything new that you had to learn or implement um, throughout the transition to online? Um, well, not necessarily around the transition, but concurrently with it, um, mm, my yeah. department chair and I were selected for a Maricopa Millions grant to, to wow. develop an OER program, uh, Open Educational Resources, which means no cost for textbooks. So wow. we, yeah, we developed um, the uh, AJS 101, which is the Introduction to Criminal Justice. Uh -huh. So uh, there is an OER section and that means that no one has to pay, the students don't have to pay for any textbook or materials or anything like that. Everything's provided to them right in the course. And so that worked out so well that I'm working on an OER for criminal investigations as well. Oh, that's amazing. That's an amazing opportunity for some of our students listening right now. Um, so what do you like to do in your free time when you don't have your um, professor hat on? Um, I clog dance. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, clogging clogging is a lot of fun, and we yeah. um, my my clogging group we performed at, um, at uh, for the Veterans Administration and for yeah. senior living centers and things like that. That's so very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay, very cool. Um, so, when you are teaching, do you have a favorite course to teach? Um. Intro to criminal justice is great and and mm -hmm. um, one of the terrific things about it is people who are not majoring in criminal justice also will take that course. It's yeah. an elective available um, in other programs and they get to learn a lot. And I think one of the fun things about it is to show the difference between real life and uh, television. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, television is uh, is for drama, but real life has some, you know, different constraints. And yeah. uh, so one of the things that uh, I've also developed for that class is I have conducted a series of interviews, much like you're interviewing me now, um, mm -hmm. of people who do uh, the real jobs that students are interested um, in in the real world. So we have yeah. um, actually a forensic anthropologist who used to be a CSI. And uh, oh, wow. she talks about the reality of, you know, those jobs and uh, we yeah. have a homicide detective. Yeah, and, um, you know, he talks about how, you know, how it's not like on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd imagine. Um, what do you think is the biggest takeaway from intro to criminal justice? Well, we cover a lot of different areas and um, we do um, career exploration. We mm -hmm. do internship exploration awesome. and also scholarships. And I think maybe one of the most important things that happens in my class is that we talk about scholarships because, uh, you know, the MCC has scholarships and there are a few scholarships that people are aware of, but there are tons of scholarships in the criminal justice field that mm. students are not aware of. And so yeah. it's, um, you know, really terrific. And some of them are uh, cash money, which is always good. And mm -hmm. some of them are, um, for example, there's uh, an LPQ, LPC, 
certification, which is loss prevention qualified, loss prevention certified, mm -hmm. and there are scholarships for that, and it involves taking a class and then taking an exam. And the loss prevention foundation has these um, these certifications, and so a student who's taken and passed the exam mm -hmm. doesn't get a guaranteed job, but gets a guaranteed interview with a retail partner. And you know, again, I, I'm partial to investigations and retail loss prevention especially organized retail crime investigations have a lot yeah. of opportunities to work cases. And some of these cases are huge. Yeah. You know, so, so that's maybe an area that students, you know, come into criminal justice and they think, well, I want to be CSI. And then they find out, uh, yeah, I don't really like blood or body fluids <laughs> or, you know, um, and yeah. so they start looking for something else. And, you know, and this is a terrific opportunity for them to get into something where they can, you know, grow and um, learn skills and, and do things that maybe they never thought about before. Yeah, absolutely. I love that there are scholarships and a lot of resources to help you get from point A to point B, because point B being like CSI or FBI sound really big and really intimidating, but it's great to hear that there's help along the way. Um, what information would you like to share with our students who are thinking about taking one of your classes at MCC? I'm an easy grader. <laughs> um, actually, you know, to succeed in my class, if you, if you show up either virtually or in person and, yeah. um, you know, we have reading assignments, videos, uh, exercises, right? Mm -hmm. If you participate in all of the things that are offered to you and we have discussions, you participate in those. There's no reason why a student could not get an A and also learn a, a whole lot more about the field than they came in uh, thinking that they knew. You know, yeah. I mean, just as an example, uh, we've got those two professional videos with the, the CSI and the homicide detective. And I think the biggest takeaways that people have from those videos is that um, in real life versus television, real life has fewer explosions and more bad smells. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I think people don't think about that when they're watching it on TV from the comforts of their living room. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we so we learn, you know, the real thing. The real world experiences, yeah. Um, so when you are teaching, either virtually or in person, how would you describe your teaching style? Um, I I very much am uh, in the role of a facilitator. So students come with funds of knowledge. They already know things. You know, mm -hmm. so they're not these blank slates waiting to you know receive information yeah. from the teacher. They know stuff, right? And they've yeah. had experiences, and those can be very useful when they share them with the class. So we can all bring in our experiences and our knowledge and combine that with you know the new material that we're accessing, and yeah. we come out with a, a better experience and more knowledge. Yeah, I, I also I do lots of of hands on things. Um, mm -hmm. And so, in addition to, say, field trips and then guest speakers, you know, who bring the real world into the classroom. Um, we also do exercises. So, uh, you know, we, 1 of 1 of my favorites and actually 1 of the favorites of the students is we have a build a bad guy exercise. <laughs> Wow. So we will take, for example, if we're uh, studying criminology, you know, we'll mm -hmm. take. Um, several different theories of crime causation and mm -hmm. we will build a bad guy to fit those theories you know so mm -hmm. we'll we'll decide you know is this person a male or female you know uh, what um, ethnic group do they belong to what's their socioeconomic status you know what kind of job do they have and so the students make up this bad guy and then they apply the theories and figure out why that person did this particular crime Very so that's always kind of fun and yeah. when we talk about Miranda rights, I mean, anybody who's watched mm -hmm. American television for yeah. a week can recite the Miranda warning, right? But <laughs> yeah. a lot of people don't really understand what's involved in the Miranda warning. So we go mm -hmm. deep into that and then we do, um, you know, we'll, we'll administer Miranda to each other and we'll wow. question, right? Uh -huh. And so, you know, there are different types of questioning techniques and depending on mm -hmm. how, you know, intense you're getting. Yeah. Um, you can you can make people say things that wow. admit to things that they didn't actually do. And so we yeah. see how that works out in the classroom. Wow, very cool. Just utilizing the good cop, bad cop routine too. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Um, do you have advice for our current or future MCC students who may be thinking about majoring in just in the area of administration of justice? 
Um, and then can you speak to the options of uh, careers that they can get into by majoring in administrative uh, justice, administration of justice? Sure. Well, I think, you know, in, in terms of advice, um, I, again, I think a lot of students come in and they and they know what they want to do and then they mm. find out that's not what I want to do. And that's okay. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. your purpose of college and higher education is to yeah. either cement your beliefs and say, oh, I thought that and now I think that even more because I've learned more evidence to support it or yeah. I thought that, but that's not really what I want and here's why, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, um, so be open. So you may think that, you know, you want to be a Mesa police officer and that is terrific and there are mm -hmm. openings and, you know, we have lots of information about that and we'll help you out with that. But maybe you find out that victim services is more your bag mm -hmm. you know, or you want to skip street patrol and go straight to investigations. So that's a different, you know, different agency, right? Or maybe you really love law enforcement, but you also love hunting and fishing. So there's a great opportunity with fish and game. You know, law wow. right? So, Very cool. so there are a lot of things. Um, so, like I said, there's there's the civilian sector uh, where there's security, and that mm -hmm. includes investigations as well as you know, armed and unarmed guards. Uh, loss prevention is a huge field in which mm -hmm. people can you know excel uh, in investigations. Um, there's police. There's corrections. The correction department is always looking for good people. That's, mm. you know, always a job that is uh, available and and there's a lot to it. It's not, you know, just like patrolling tears. There's, there's a lot to work with people. There's victim services, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a part of uh, almost every every police department in Arizona, as well mm -hmm. as some other agencies. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are people who want to go into the law, so they start yeah. You know, studying criminal justice, and from there they branch off into you know they go into their uh, finish their four year degree and then go to law school. And mm -hmm. um, you know, criminal justice class is a good place to sort of decide. You know, do I want to be on the side of the prosecution or the defense? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, you know, lot, lots of lots of different jobs that can be done, and so we we explore a lot of them. Also, you know, in Arizona we have. Uh, it's around 21 Native American reservations. And so mm -hmm. the tribal police are always needed, yeah. you know. And yeah. so maybe somebody, you know, has a connection to a particular tribe and they, you know, want to go back and mm -hmm. uh, work with their people. And there's great opportunity to do that. Hmm. Very cool. I love that um, career services, uh, exploration, internships are very well built into this department. So that way students who are taking classes can really start to figure out where they fit into this huge subject of administration of justice. Very cool. Very cool. So all this information has been amazing for the students who are considering administration of justice. Um, so now I just have a very like silly bonus question that we could answer just to give our students a little more insight as to who you are. Um, so if you'd like to participate, all you have to do is select a number from 1 to 50 and then I just ask a really silly question. 2. 2. Very good. If you could be any animal in the world, what animal would you be and why? Um, I think I would be a kangaroo. <laughs> Oh, very cool. They look like they have so much fun hopping around. <laughs> yeah, and just having their little babies in their pouch. Super cute. Okay, well, thank you so much again for participating in our faculty spotlight. This is such a wonderful opportunity for our students to take a peek into a field of interest and gain some very valuable knowledge from your personal uh, experience. So everybody watching, please be sure to check out our other faculty spotlights. Be safe, stay healthy, and go Thunderbirds.